All right, so what we're going to do is put an object on the back plate. So for this, um, oh, let me get some back plates. So here's something that we could do. The reason I like parking lots because they have like a uh, some they have the columns and they're gonna help for this. You know, I'll try this one, right? So right click, save image as. I think I already saved this. All right, so this is the one that I want. And so let's put it into Maya. So what I'm gonna do is not do it, well, actually, okay, it is this one. All right, so we're in our perspective view. And what I'll do is, is I'll, or maybe we create a new camera. Let me try that. So create camera. Well, I can also do camera from view, right? So right now I'm in my camera. Shot cam, right? So this is my shot cam. I'm inside of it. And uh, I want to put my image inside of here. So if I went to create background image and then click on this for the image, let me go to my desktop. And now we have this in here, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this grid and I'm going to try to align this the best I can to uh, this right here, basically. So what you want to do is you want to try to find the perspective lines in your scene. So what I mean by this is I, I can try to do it with the whole grid. Uh, I was trying to do it with the half of the grid. Let's just do it with the whole grid, All right? So what I'm doing is I'm trying to line this up so that it has a nice, like, so it flows along the uh, these lines. So this is what you call a vanishing point. So um, this right here goes into oblivion, and then this one right here it keeps on going. This this uh, scene, luckily, because of this grid. I think I got it like just right. I think this is like perfect, actually. This right here. Because what I've done is I've lined this up. So if I go back and forth, I'm just zooming in and out. It flows along this grid pretty nicely. And that's exactly what we want. Um, what buttons are you pushing to move the grid? Oh, I'm just pressing, uh, I'm just rotating the viewport. So this is Alt and right mouse button. Alt and left mouse button to to do uh, the um, to rotate. So it's basically the same uh, controls, but you're just trying to align this so that it so you can find the vanishing point. Okay. So this right here is here. This looks pretty good so far. Um, And like I said, I was just trying to get it to be like half of the grid. It might not even matter in the end, but. Yeah, because the grid started disappearing a little bit. So I have this right here and it's lined up. You see this right here is looking good. This right here is looking good. And sometimes it just depends on the photo that you can have more uh, stuff going on. Anyway, because I like this, and this is lovely to me, I'm going to click right here to select the camera that we're in, shot cam, and then I'm going to click this right here to lock it. So it's locked, right? I can't move it at all. So now I'm going to click on this and go to perspective and get out of my camera, because there goes my camera and it's all set up. Now, what I'm going to do is, because my grid is there, I can make something like put a cylinder, let's say, or uh, 
But let's look at what this looks like inside of our camera. All right, cool. We have this right here. It's looking good. Um, yeah, I like it. All right, so let's get outside of our camera and let's put it on a ground plane. So I have my ground plane right here. I'm pressing the scale. Now we have this. Everything's looking great. Go right here, go to shot cam. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick render. So I'm going to go to Arnold, go to the play. And look at what we see, right? We see this. I'll press stop. Now let's put some materials on here. So I'm going to right click. No, no. First, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to assign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And we're going to go to, I don't know. We're going to just call it cylinder and give it like, I don't know, some like greenish kind of color, which is fine, right? Cool. And um, also I'm going to create a light. So let me get out of here and create a light. So I'm going to go to Arnold, lights, go to area light, scale this thing up, shine it down on here. It's looking good, looking good, all right? Perfect. And now I'm going to go right here, go to my shot cam and give it a render. I'm just going to go put it on my Arnold shelf to make everything look good. All right. We don't see anything. So now I'm going to type in 25. All right. Because I like to see it. 15. All right. Cool. So this is what we see. We see our shadows and it's on top of this plane. But what we don't want to see is this plane. And to, to solve that, we click on our object, we right click, we go to assign new material, Arnold. And then instead of going to AI standard surface, we're going to go to AI shadow mat and we'll click on this. Now let's give it a render and look at what happened, right? We don't see the plane, but it catches our shadows. So now we have our uh, object right here, and it's on top of our shadows. I didn't even mean to do that. It's kind of all right being there. So now if I go over here and I move this, you see what happens? It moves it with the shadow. I mean, it moves it, and you know we can see the shadows there. If it's on the ground, we can see our shadow. It's floating above, you can see it as well, which is pretty cool. But now check this out. There's another thing we can do. We see this post right here. One thing we can do is we can actually make this post into a uh, object so that this can pass behind it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you what I mean. If I go to create and I go to polygon primitives and I go to cube, we have our cube right here. So I can take this cube, I can press four to see through and I can take it and I can move it over here. Uh, it's gonna be hard moving that up because we don't see the arrow. So if I hold down control and I click behind the number, like middle mouse button click behind, I can get it to do this. So now that I'm over here, I'm gonna press T to scale because what I want now is for this to kind of uh, line up with that. Well, I want this, this basically, this cube to be right here. So, you know, this front face, I'm basically going to try to arrange this so that this line lines up with this one. This line lines up with that one. Yeah, so I'm just going to scale this up. So you're just trying to basically fit it to the shape. So I think that's kind of doing it. So now I'll raise this up. So it's kind of, like I said, you can see the cube right here, the cube right there. It looks all right. So if I press play right here, look at what we have. We have this cube. Cool. But now what I'll do is 
I'll click on this. Oh, let me press five. And I'll do right click assign existing material. Since we already have a shadow mat, I'm going to click on this one and make this another. So add a shadow mat to this as well. So this is the shadow mat and so does this. Now let's give it a render. Now we don't really, uh, we don't see it anymore, all right? But now if I take this, remember I'm holding down middle mouse button click. Oh, let me make this plane bigger, right? Because we're gonna be seeing it. All right. So we have this right here. Now watch this. If I move this now and move it behind, I thought it would work. Oh, no, because I'm looking at it through this view. So if I look farther, hmm, I might need to select this and move this back a bit. No. So if I move this closer, would that help? Okay. So uh, I just had it a little bit too far back. But if I kind of look at the shadow on the ground, I kind of see where it's trying to go. So let me stop this, press four. And I'll do the same thing, but I'll scale this down. Press five. Play. Okay, so if I move it to about right here, this actually looks like so. This right here, it takes a little bit more adjusting to get this just right like i said this is a job in itself just to do this yeah if you wanted something to go behind another object this would kind of be the way to do it um, let me go back here, perspective, just so we can kind of see what's happening. Oh, we can put this on the ground just to see. Yeah, basically this, I'm trying to move it in this view just so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit tricky. Let's see if I take this and I move these over here. Oh, 
Okay, look at that. See? So now we have this, and it floats behind here. And everything looks good. So if I stop this, I'm still in my shot cam. And let's see if I go click on this for a final render, see what we got. Why can't I grab this? It's looking pretty good. Now check this out, right? I'm going to stop this. Well, I'm going to um, go right here. Let's go to Arnold. Maya. We can go here. And let's go to These tutorials, learning scenes, and let's go to this one with this car, all right? We can go to download. See, I already had it here somewhere. But let me just go to this. And we have this, right? Studio top, studio rear, studio side. So let's just go to the top one. And I'm just going to drag this onto my desktop so I have it. Now, watch this, right? I'm going to, um, everything is stopped here. I'm just going to go to File, Save Scene As, and I'll just go to my desktop. Wow. Uh, save it as um uh I don't know parking lot. So I saved it as parking lot, right? It's in my ABCD folder. So now I'm gonna drag this in, which is this car, this this scene that I just downloaded, and saying I have errors and yada yada yada, right? So now I'm gonna go and get in my perspective view. Press S to zoom in. Oh, let me click on this. Click S. Or can I see anything? Okay. Oh, F. Sorry. Wrong program. All right. So if I press five, we can see we have this car and we have this ground plane. Well, we have this plane right here. So I'm going to select everything here, deselect this ground, and I'm going to. Yeah, since th these two are selected, press delete. So now we just have the car. And if I click on the car, this is what we have. So I'll just move this car right here. And I will go to panels and go to my shot cam again. Take this. Now I'm going to scale this up. And if we were to move this back, like right here, let's press play and see what happens. Okay, now we have a car in our scene. So we could take it. And now we have a car in our parking lot. And what I'll do with this is I'll just make a little snapshot. Close this. So we have a car here. And if we want to, Control D. Let me hold down control and click, bring this over here. And I'll hold down J, turn this 90 degrees. And we could take this, we could hide it if we want. Let's just hide it right now. So we have this. Now let's press our play button. Now we have our car behind our post. I should have moved it with the whole group, so. So we can see our car. All right, it's bad car noise, but yeah. 
now we have a card to see. If we wanted to animate this, it would be cool. But yeah, this is how we do uh, object integration. So yeah, and then after this, it's all about just adjusting the um, the lights how you want. So we have this light right here, but also if we wanted to add like a, uh, you know, even more lighting, well, let's just do that. Let's go to Arnold lights, Sky Dome light, and we could just go to our Polyhaven site. And then we can go to indoor, maybe there's an urban indoor or parking lot or something kind of deal where we have something that's similar to our lighting. And that's the goal. We're just trying to get something that will look, okay, look at this, auto shop. So we'll download this one. Auto shop EXR. So let me select my dome. I'll click right here. I'll go to my file. Click on this. Now let's go to my downloads. My auto shop. Press play. It's converting the texture to a .tx. Now look at this. Now we see our uh, our dome light on top of everything. So if we select our dome light and we go to camera and we just turn it to zero, then we don't see that. We're in our shot cam now. So let me go over here and go to my shot cam. And now look at what we have. So this is the one before the dome light and this is the one after it. So we'll snapshot that. And then if we select our dome and we press, uh, oh, we already have our rotate right here, right? So we can go in and rotate this and it'll change the look of the reflections on our car as we can see. And of course we can go into exposure and turn it down, tone it down or tone it up. Or, you know, turn up the explosion. We could also do shift right click. I mean, shift left click to get a, re a region. So now we're uh, we can adjust even more. So we have this. And now we could see what a final render looks like. And look at that. And of course, if we want it to be a high, more high quality render, we can go right here. We can go to HD 720. We all should do 1080 since we're just doing one of these. And go to Arnold. No, wait, let's click back on these settings. We can go right here. And if we were just to put this on three and this to six, well, let's put it on five, right? And then we could do three for this as well. Subservice, we could put that on zero. And do a render. Oh, actually that's the uh, other render. Oh, so I wanna save this, so I'll click on this. And then let's click on this again for the final render. 
And so now this will render it out at 1080p um, with some higher resolution settings. Because what we're not trying to do is get the noise. What we can see is we see noise in this area right down here. We can see how long it took, 18 seconds. We have some noise there. Don't like that. Also, I want to make this grid larger so that we can make sure it's getting everything. Let's put this to six. We can do four, four. And so if I click right here, I'll save this one and do another one. Oh no, that's the wrong one. I'm gonna click on this. Okay, so this one took 33 seconds, but let's look at what the difference is. Yeah, we're getting some weirdness there. That's all about our shape. So turning up those settings did this. So here's the 18. So we cleaned up our noise. So if you look right here, this is our new one. This is our old one. So the noise settings going up help that and also you can kind of see what's happening probably in the tire and then also over here so low high so we're just getting a little bit more yeah yeah but the higher you set that the better it's going to look And if we click on this one to one, this gives us our true resolution. But yeah, it looks like it's it's in there. So that's how you put an object on a back plate in Maya.